Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So this week, we are taking a look at superheroes specifically, and we're looking at them through two lenses. First, we are looking at them as examples of pop art. Um, and the ultimate question is, are they art? Uh, do they count as art? Does pop art qualify? Um, is it high art or low art? Or does that distinction even matter? Uh, and so I've asked you to consider this when it comes to superheroes. Beyond that, we are also looking at them as political ideas um, or as carriers of political ideology. And I think that is particularly interesting. Um, I, I've given you some stuff on Superman with this idea that comics are political from their very beginning, by their very nature. Um, early Superman comics were all about him as a super reformer. He is protecting the downtrodden. He is punishing the corrupt and the wicked. And it's coming out of this Great Depression era ethos of concern with corrupt society, with corrupt political figures, uh, with warmongers and war profiteers and people who are making a buck off of, you know, the backs of the workers. And so some of these early comics, you know, Superman's uh, traps a mine owner in a cave-in just to show him that, you know, here are the safety regulations you're ignoring and basically threatens to kill him. Um, he threatens to electrocute uh, a lobbyist to get him to talk about it, bribing a politician, things like that. And I like to think this culminates in kind of uh, the 1946's the, the Adventures of Superman radio show, the story, The Clan of the Fiery Cross. And it's this idea that basically Superman took on the KKK and won. He dealt a death blow or nearly a death blow to the to a real world terrorist organization, which I think is especially fun with this idea of uh, reality and fiction kind of being a little fuzzier around the edges than we might think. But yeah. Um, so watch the Superman or listen to the Superman radio show read the article about him also read up on wonder woman uh, or a little bit of her background because again marston whose article i asked you to read um and he he makes the case that comics are a form of storytelling that is actually more ancient than we think and that these have potential political ideology um he's making that argument i totally agree with him but you don't have to that's one thing we'll discuss in the discussion boards um but yeah, look at his argument, look at what he's saying, and look at Wonder Woman as an example of, you know, arguing that basically females, women have power too. Women can be heroic. Women should be idolized. Um, also, if you look at some of his early stuff, bondage, willing submission to somebody with power, especially ideally a woman. Uh, he kind of mentions that in the article. He had some interesting ideas. So, um, yeah, these are political creatures from the get-go, and they have a lot of power. Uh, Ms. Magazine, which is a, a renowned feminist icon, a uh, renowned feminist publication started by, I think, icon Gloria Steinem, its first issue had Wonder Woman for President on the cover. You know, that's, that's the kind of impact these figures have. They are powerful symbols. And then once you've looked at that, once you've considered that, I want you to take a look at One Punch Man, because it is a parody. Uh, it's a parody of shonen anime, so things like uh, Naruto, Attack on Titan, Dragon Ball Z, um, most anything that you would see on Cartoon Network, for example. Uh, those are all shonen anime, anime for young boys. If it has a fighting arc tournament in it, it's shonen. Um, so it's a parody of all these series. But I like it because of this philosophical idea. And that's what I talk about in the essay that I asked you all to read from me. Um, real briefly, I argue that one is in conversation with people like Alan Moore. If you've read or watched Watchmen or know anything about it, A, it's great. B, it's arguing basically we don't want superheroes. Because this is what superheroes would be like in the real world. They would be neurotic, they would be tyrannical, they would be psychotic and sadistic and power hungry. And that's pretty much what he shows you. 
um, with this argument that no, basically superheroes would suck because they would walk all over the little people. But the argument still exists. Well, what if I'm the superhero? What if I'm the man in charge? Then will this idea of the Ubermensch, the superior man, if I'm one of them, I get to have fun, don't I? If I'm the superhero, I get to do the terror, uh, terrorizing. There we go. I get to be the one smashing people. So it's still fun for me. I argue that one, the artist, the author of One Punch Man is saying, well, no, even if you were the Ubermensch, the superior man, this ultimate idea, ideal, you'd be bored out of your mind. It's boring to be the superior man. It's boring and unfun to have all this power. So that's where I see him being, entering into this conversation. And um, just generally, I find one to be very entertaining. He also does a show called Mob Psycho 100. Both are have some heavy philosophical elements, but they're they're very interesting. So um, give that a watch or a read. Read the two academic articles, mine and Marston's, because they're, I don't think they're very difficult. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to seeing what you think about superheroes. Are they art? I think you probably know where I fall on that, but could be different. Who knows? Anyway, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a good week.